Hey, it's Tammy M here of TammyMCoaching.com, empowerment life coach and creator of the Freedom Class. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to identify and manage the covert narcissist. Now, before I begin this video, I just want to quickly announce that we have a few spots available in the calendar this week for the free one-to-one -one consult with either myself or a member of my team for the Freedom Class program. So to learn more about exactly what that is and how to enroll for that free consult, be sure to stick around till the end of the video for the announcement on that. And with that, let's get started. So let's talk about how to identify and manage someone who lands on the spectrum of covert narcissism. Now, before I dive into the nitty gritty of it all, you know, it's always important to remember when we're discussing these issues, these are never black or white issues, right? There is a spectrum, a continuum to what is considered to be narcissistic personality. So whether that, you know, depending on who you're speaking to, that can be considered a, nar a destructive narcissist pattern, a narcissistic personality pattern on the more severe end of the spectrum. We're getting into the realm of personality disorder that actually requires requires a diagnosis. As many of you are probably already aware, the vast majority of these folks are actually running around quite undiagnosed simply by virtue of what they have, right? So this isn't about, you know, the amateur psychoanalysis or putting a diagnosis inappropriate, inappropriately on someone as a life coach. It is certainly not my place to diagnose anyone, but you don't have to be a psychotherapist, a doctor, a psychologist psychiatrist to be able to recognize that the individual that you're dealing with likely lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, destructive narcissist pattern, or narcissistic personality, right? Whether or not that's a diagnosed or undiagnosed personality disorder is a whole other conversation, right? So again, you don't have to be a doctor or a psychiatrist to figure these things out based on your own personal experience. One once you know exactly what it is that you're looking for, but you know, the truth is it's not always easy to spot right out of the gate simply because these folks are master manipulators, right? So if they feel that it is in their best interest, you know, for whatever agenda they might be running at the time, if they feel it's in their best interest to put on a real good act and performance in terms of their fake phony facade and, you know, the false mask that they project to the world, if they feel that it's going to be, you know, serving them in any way to do that with you, you can be duped for a good long time, even if you think you know what you're looking for, right? Again, these folks are master manipulators. Now, you know, the more overt narcissist personality pattern or personality uh, certainly can be easier to recognize quickly as much as they are master manipulators um, you know their their entitlement their grandiosity all of that you know kind of gives them away pretty quickly you know and if they don't feel like there's anything to gain uh, from you know presenting you with you know the, the the BS performance that they're so adept at putting on they'll likely be looking at you with contempt and disdain quite unwarranted quite unprovoked contempt and disdain because uh, if they can't get something from you if you're of no actual benefit or use to them you're beneath them in their perception and therefore you know you'll be treated like goo on on their shoe right so pretty, you know, not, you don't have to be a rocket science scientist to figure that out when it's coming at you. But what's even trickier is identifying the covert narcissist. Um, and although they are inwardly just as entitled, uh, just as grandiose, just as empathy defic deficient, just as lacking in conscience, depending on where they land on the spectrum, of course. Again, these are never black or white issues. But, you know, the covert narcissist will have all of these really um, destructive to relationships, personality traits, 
but they're even more hidden because as I've, as I've said in other videos, if you've been tuning into me for any length of time, specific to this particular conversation, covert narcissists present very differently, right? They present very differently than your typical, classic, overt, grandiose, more aggressive narcissist who we typically, you know, think of when we're thinking in terms of destructive narcissism. And, you know, the really tricky thing about covert narcissists is, you know, they can show up as being very timid and insecure and shy and uh, reserved and, you know, self-deprecating and, um, you know, really uh, presenting as a very meek personality, which is fully a face, a, a, a fake, phony, false persona, but, you know, they'll present that way often, but even there, not always, right? Like not, not always are they showing up as insecure. Sometimes they're not insecure and anxiety riddled. What they are um, is, you know, inwardly very arrogant, great big huge egos, but they're very adept at projecting this I'm such a good guy. I'm such a good girl. Look at what a wonderful, generous, philanthropic, even uh, human being I am, right? Like they, they're really adept at convincing everyone what a freaking hero they are, right? So although covert narcissists can often present as being the professional victim, right? Like the lifelong victims, you know, um, with the never ending victim story that they're running. And that's often the case. And that's often a real telltale sign that you've got a covert narcissist on your hands. Sometimes they're not showing up as a victim. They're showing up as the freaking hero, still relatively reserved and meek and timid and shy, um, but going out of their way to show you just how generous they are and what a good freaking human being they are. So, you know, it can be really um, difficult to discern what it is that you're dealing with until you have enough experience with an individual over a period of time. And what I find, you know, as an empath is we're always so um, ready, willing, and able to give people the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, we're um, more than willing to be, you know, long suffering and highly tolerant and very patient and, you know, non-judgmental, et cetera, et cetera, with folks, right? So we give people a lot of leeway. And if you're anything like me, like I don't need perfect in my relationships, right? In any area of my life, I'm not looking for perfection, but I do need a few things. I need honest. I need emotionally mature. I need uh, accountable. I need relatively emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, intact and healthy, right? I need someone who, you know, can show up an adult in a relationship. And what I've learned is whatever flavor of narcissist you're dealing with, covert, over, you know, uh, covert, overt, or the different flavors of covert, whether that's the, you know, the perpetual victim or the one who's working so hard to show you what a hero and how generous they are and what an unbelievably decent, kind, wonderful human being they are, that person who makes that a full-time job. Whatever flavor of destructive narcissism you're dealing with, sooner or later, the mask is gonna slip if you're in any kind of a relationship with this individual. And and sooner or later, you will quite by accident trigger what's really going on with them beneath the surface, behind the mask, right? Sooner or later, you're likely to actually trigger all of that stuff. Again, often quite by accident, just by showing up and being you, just by showing up and having some standards in terms of how you live your life, how you show up in life, how you conduct yourself, what you're willing to put up with or not, just by being you, 
just by shining your bright light, just by being, you know, um, genuinely authentic and, you know, reasonably relatively healthy and mature can be all it takes to have the mask slip and trigger their nonsense. And once triggered, you'll know you've triggered it not least of which because one way or another, passive aggressively or aggressively, there's going to be something coming at you, right? Depending on the circumstances, whether or not they back themselves too tightly into a corner will determine the intensity. Um, and they may, you know, very well tell you, everything is fine repeatedly when you know full well because you can feel it and you can see it everything is anything but fine right but you know the point being sooner or later you are going to know that something's really off with this individual likely because quite by accident you've triggered their stuff and they're now projecting it all onto you and you're going like, what the hell is it that, you know, what happened? Am I in a PSYOP movie? Like, what the hell is going on um, as all of this stuff is being unloaded on you? And, you know, you may very well find yourself in a position where you're, you know, stating the facts, communicating clearly, really putting in the effort, and no matter how hard you try, no matter how much energy, time, effort you put into this, they cannot hear you. They can only hear what serves them in the moment, as they project all of their denial, insecurity, fear, guilt, shame, unresolved issues, in essence, their shadow onto you. So, you know, again, tricky to spot them, tricky to see them coming, not always easy to discern that this is what we're dealing with, but sooner or later, you're likely to trigger whatever's going on with them and the mask is gonna slip. And you're going to find yourself dealing with a highly wounded emotional toddler in an adult body who fundamentally does not have the ability to own their own stuff, take responsibility for their own unresolved issues, their own wounds, their own traumas, their own distorted perceptions of reality, their own fears, their own guilt, their own shame, their own insecurity. And as a, you know, a result of not being able to take responsibility for all of that, you're dealing with this wounded, highly emotional, triggered, somewhat traumatized, depending on the individual, right? Child in an adult body, and there really is only so much you can do with that. You know, there comes a point where we have to distance ourselves from wounded adults who are fully constitutionally incapable of taking responsibility for themselves and their own stuff and as a result feel the need to project it onto us right you know in my own personal experience i'll go so far and i'll go far if i love you and i'm invested in the relationship no matter what you know area of my life this may be whether this is a friend you know um, a family member like whoever it might might be right i'll go far but there comes a point where my personal integrity, my sense of self-respect, my uh, refusal to be gaslit, my refusal to be uh, emotionally manipulated, my refusal to take on shit that doesn't belong to me, right? Like there's a line, there's a line, there must come a line where, you know, I'm, I'm willing to put in the effort to communicate clearly and work it out with you, but there comes a point where if you're not dealing with someone who has the capacity to be honest, honest and responsible for their own reality and adult in the relationship with you, you know, you might have to close that door.
So what do you do when you realize that this individual that you've been dealing with probably lands on the spectrum of covert narcissism? All this time you've been relating to them, um, you know, cutting them some slack, giving them a pass, overlooking this, letting that go in the spirit of being a decent, kind, compassionate, tolerant, patient human being in a relationship, right? We're relating with human beings who are perfectly imperfect. So it's quite normal that we would do some of that in our relationships, right? But again, there comes a point where you know, there's got to be a line drawn in the sand. And if you get to a place where what you're realizing is this isn't a one off, this isn't a one time misunderstanding or one time miscommunication, right? Miscommunications can happen in any relationship. But when you have enough experience to realize there's a freaking pattern going on here, right? Like, you know, it seems as if that, you know, there's now a number of experiences where you're scratching your head because you know full well X, Y, Z was said, and this person's over here playing dumb saying, no, that's not what I said. No, I never said that. Hmm, I don't recall. Hmm. I don't remember, like when you've got that sort of thing going on with an individual, and again, you know, like the one-off, the occasional, yes, miscommunications can happen in relationships, in any relationship, but when there is a pattern of that sort of experience with an individual, that's a tremendous, huge red flag. And if the individual is such a wonderful human being, very meek, very timid, maybe the perpetual victim style, anxiety riddled, covert narcissist, and maybe not, maybe the super philanthropic um, or hyper generous, you know, always, you know, making sure that they look Look like the good human being over here doesn't mean, you know, just because they're not the uh, professional victim, anxiety riddled, covert narcissist flavor does not mean that they are not an emotional manipulator, right? So, you know, it all looks good and might even feel good to a certain degree. At a certain point, you start realizing, hmm, yeah, you know, I'm 99.999% sure that that's what I heard. And now this individual is telling me the opposite. And when these are little, you know, niggly little things in our life, it's like, it's easy to sort of brush them aside, but sometimes they're big things, right? Like sometimes they're great, big, huge things. And you've got an adult on your hand playing dumb saying, you know, no, no, that's not what I said, right? And I mean, if you can produce proof uh, via, you know, like a series of text messages in black and white, problem solved, right? But unfortunately in life, we can't always do that, you know? We're not always communicating in black and white where there's a record, right? So, you know, for those of you who are co-parenting with this type of master manipulator, it would be good to stick to the black and white, everything's on record type of communication. But, you know, in everyday life, uh, before you discern that you've actually got, you know, a really emotionally immature, highly toxic, you know, uh, master manipulator putting on a performance for you before you actually figure out that that's what you've been dealing with all this time, you might not have a record of everything, right? Like we're genuine, sincere human beings going through life, giving people the benefit of the doubt, assuming that they're going to show up and be an adult and be honest and be decent and be real and be genuine and not bring a, you know, a whole heap of bullshit to the table, right? But as I said earlier, if you're actually dealing with an emotional manipulator, a master manipulator, sooner or later, no matter where they are on the covert spectrum or what flavor they may be, sooner or later, that mask is going to slip. Sooner or later, you're going to trigger their stuff. Sooner or later, you're going to recognize there's a freaking pattern here of this individual telling me one thing, and then when it matters, saying... I don't recall. That's not what I said. 
no, you know, like I, I, I only have so much tolerance for that sort of thing. And in my opinion, if you want to live a happy, healthy, peaceful life, so should you. So should you. Yes, we give people the benefit of the doubt. Yes, we cut people some slack. Certainly people are, you know, um, uh, should be allowed to, you know, fall down, make mistakes, what have you. But when there's zero ownership and you've got a pattern of that sort of thing being repeated in a relationship where you're sitting back, scratching your head and you're like, I'm a thousand percent sure I did not hallucinate that statement, that information, that conversation, whatever it was, like this is what I was told and now I'm being told the exact opposite. That only has to happen so many times, in my opinion, before we should be like, <laughs> something's up here. That is a huge red flag. So what do we do when we realize that, you know, this is what's going on? This is what we're dealing with. Well, you know, it's very easy to say no contact. And although I'm a big fan when we're talking about bullies, emotional manipulators, people who are willing to distort the truth, lie by omission, use truth out of context, you know, people who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, in other words, right? I'm a big fan of no no contact. And sometimes no contact is essential for self-preservation. It's also not always an option or not always an option right out of the gate. And sometimes we're still figuring it out. We're still trying to work it out. Like, is it just that this person is highly stressed and overwhelmed, but really well-intended and they're just very forgetful that they said, you know, this was what was going on for this particular event and you get there and it's an entirely different situation. And, you know, as an example, right? Like it could be any number of things could be going on, right? So, you know, we give people the benefit of the doubt, again, to a degree, at a certain point when there's a pattern and you know that this person is fundamentally, constitutionally incapable of taking full responsibility, showing up as an adult, being real, honest, genuine, you know, you ask them, you know, is everything okay? And they're saying yes, when the truth is no. That's not honest. That's not adult. That's not genuine or sincere, especially if you've asked repeatedly and repeatedly you're being told everything's fine when everything is not fine, right? So, you know, no contact is very powerful for self preservation. But if you can't do that, or you can't do that right out of the gate, you want to start with just surrendering to the reality of what is. And I'm not saying that this is always easy. I'm not saying that this is necessarily going to be comfortable. If you've been duped by someone you've fallen in love with in any area of your life, you've invested in the relationship, you genuinely care, and you find out a few weeks, a few months, a few years down the track that it was all an illusion and who you thought you were investing in in this relationship with is actually was just a mirage and that turns out not to be who they are at all. That's going to be painful that's going to be uncomfortable. There's nothing, you know, there are a few things that are more disheartening than recognizing that you've been fully duped by someone that you genuinely, sincerely care about and have genuinely and sincerely invested in the relationship with, right? Like that's not going to be a comfortable thing to have to accept. But accept you must, accept you must, no matter how uncomfortable, because denying and pushing things aside and repressing and suppressing and ignoring and denying some more is really what dysfunction is all about, right? And that is not where we wanna be. So as uncomfortable as the truth might be, 
we have to get to a place of surrendering to the reality of what is. Wow, there's a pattern here with this person. This person is really, really good at presenting this image, but the pattern over time that I'm experiences, experiencing is something quite different, right? And that means there's some cognitive dissonance going on, right? Like they've convinced me what a freaking amazing, kind, sweet, you know, wonderful soul they are. But now that I've accidentally triggered their stuff, just by virtue of like living my life in my lane, nothing to do with them and their stuff, but that was enough, you know, to, to trigger the avalanche like I'm seeing, right? Or like there's a pattern of, you know, some really not cool things that are going on here in terms of, you know, being fully misunderstood, too many um, episodes of like serious miscommunication where the consequences to you in particular can be quite dire, right? And their, you know, inability to, you know, just be accountable and be real and be honest, right? Like with all of that, surrendering to the reality of what is as uncomfortable as that might be, is gonna be your best bet. It's gonna be the safest way to go. And from there, realistic expectations. Now, I for one, when I recognize that the person I'm dealing with is, you know, not able to, you know, meet the very reasonable criteria that I have in terms of if you want to be in my life, there are certain things I expect, like I said earlier, honesty, you know, a certain capacity to accept responsibility for one's personal experience without projecting their shit all over me or anyone else, right? Like, like I think those are reasonable standards and exp expectations to have if you're going to have someone in your close inner circle. So when I recognize that the individual through a pattern of behavior over time, despite the facade, there's, you know, too many other things that have been going on. There's only so many times I'm gonna turn a blind eye to that, and then I'm gonna back the hell away from the relationship. And depending on the circumstances, I might even go full-blown no contact. And if I can't do it immediately, I'm gonna do it when I'm able, right? Like it, it, I recognize we can't always go no contact immediately. So, you know, if we've got to go low doses before we can go no doses, you know, wean ourselves off, back away slowly, put some serious distance there, put some boundaries up, right? Once you know you've given it your best shot and you've given this individual every opportunity over a period of time and what you're getting back is a load of bullshit, especially if in comparison comparison to what you've invested, it's time to back up, right? So radical acceptance and then realistic expectations in terms of what this person has shown you they are capable of. Do not expect someone who repeatedly plays dumb with you, says one thing, then says they never said it, and then says something else, and then says they never said it, and then, then says something else, and then says they never said it, and does that repeatedly. Don't expect them to be honest, straightforward, genuine, sincere, safe, trustworthy. They've already shown you repeatedly that they are none of those things. There's nothing safe about any relationship with any individual who can have a pattern of that type of behavior. A one-off miscommunication? Absolutely. The occasional, uh, we got our wires crossed? Absolutely. A pattern? A whole other story. A pattern of misunderstanding you no matter how many times you repeat yourself, no matter how many times you try to communicate, communicate clearly with an individual, um, you know, a pattern of not being able or willing to hear you and a pattern of misrepresenting you to you you know if they're misrepresenting you to you, if they're misrepresenting what you've said to you, they're misrepresenting what you've said to everyone else, right? So you only get to do that in my world, in relationship with me so many times before I'm like, adios, right? Life is too short. 
and hard enough without all the extra nonsense, right? Without all the extra nonsense. So again, radical acceptance, no matter how uncomfortable that is, realistic expectations. In spite of the phony facade, there's a repetitive pattern of, you know, whatever kind of behavior that is really um, toxic and destructive to relationships whether that's chipping away at the foundation of the relationship slowly over time or great big huge transgressions however that's showing up realistic expectations don't expect it to be different moving forward if for any reason you're choosing to stay in the game they're showing you who they are behind the mask you can count on the fact that you're going to be in store for more of that the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So if they have a pattern of behavior that is causing you great discomfort, concern, confusion, cognitive dissonance, whatever it is, right? Don't expect them to be other than who they have shown you they are capable of being. Now, in addition to that, we want to, um, when we're dealing with this type of individual, really make a decision that there is only so much explaining and defending of ourselves we are going to do. You know, I'm, you know, willing, if I care about an individual, to go the distance and explain my point of view, my perception, and really um, communicate the truth of my experience, the truth of, you know, whatever it is that we're dealing with, right? And if they don't seem to be hearing me, I will certainly make the effort and the investment of time, energy, et cetera, to, you know, say what I need to say to try to get through to them to a degree. And if they are still unable or unwilling to hear me, there comes a point where it's time to stop. And that we just stop explaining and we stop defending ourselves, right? This is a way in which covert or overt narcissists will suck the vital life force energy from your very being, from your soul. They're getting high off of all of this energy while we're ex in the ring, explaining, defending, explaining some more, communicating this way, it's not working, communicating that way, it's not. And meanwhile, they're just, you know, sucking it up. And we, we walk away, it takes us three days to recover from the freaking hangover of it all, right? Sometimes three weeks, depending on the situation, right? <laughs> like for those of you who are romantically enmeshed with this type of individual, like it takes a freaking toll, right? So yes, we give people the benefit of the doubt. Yes, you know, we show up in a relationship willing to invest and communicate. And if there's some explaining that needs to be done, done or you know defending our perspective and experience to a degree but you know you don't want to go too far with that right you know the reality is when you've said it once to someone who is not hearing impaired they've heard you they've heard you whether they want to or not so if you feel the need to repeat yourself a second or third time so that you can you know like tick the box for yourself that you've given it your best shot but beyond that it's enough now it's enough now you know when you've got an individual who's running their own agenda mired in their own muck in full-blown triggered mode projecting everything onto you refusing to hear uh reason no matter how hard you try, silence is going to be your biggest ally, you know, right up there with distance. Silence and distance, right? Silence and distance. No explaining, no defending, back up, allow them to have their distorted perception. And if that includes running distorted narratives, let them fill their freaking boots. Believe me, in due time, anyone that matters is going to give you the benefit of the doubt of a freaking conversation and going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you know there might be more to this story than this one side right and if they're not willing to do that they don't matter i'm not saying that's easy 
I'm not saying that's comfortable. I'm not saying that doesn't hurt. I've been on the receiving end of many a smear campaign in my life. I know how excruciatingly painful that can be, especially if we haven't really done our own healing and recovery work for a, an extended period of time. We've got a lot of wounds. A lot of our own stuff can be triggered. So that can be really hurtful. Take responsibility for your own triggers. Take responsibility for your own pain. Take responsibility for what's going on inside of you and find a way to deal with that without handing your vital life force energy over to someone whose agenda it is, is to not hear you and to misrepresent you no matter what. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, that's going to be their agenda. Let them. And your job is to find a way, figure out a way to take care of you. And that may very well be instituting some new boundaries, new healthy limits, new healthy boundaries, right? And if this is a skill set that you haven't developed yet, that's a skill set that you need to develop for yourself, right? When the mass slips and you realize you've got an emotional manipulator on your hands who's toxic running their own agenda and, and further, you know, misrepresenting you and potentially even a full-blown smear campaign uh going on it's you know you you do not have the right to control another person's perception no matter how distorted that perception may be but you do have the right to take care of yourself in that situation right so you know your job is to remove yourself from the dynamic in so much as you are able to as soon as you are able to if it's a living situation together and you can't flick that switch like that, there's kids involved, it's more complicated, that's okay. You know, sometimes these things take time, but distance and self-care, self-care. And finally, in terms of, you know, managing exposure or, you know, any sort of entanglement with this covert narcissist personality um, type individual that you've, you know, discovered you're in the process of, of having to deal with, um, not personalizing their negativity, their unresolved issues, their guilt, their shame, their fear, their insecurity, their distorted perception of reality, their distorted narrative, right? I know that's a whole lot easier said than done, but with some distance, with some serious self-care, with the right support system, if you're doing the work of real healing and recovery work, it's a whole lot easier to separate yourself, not just physically, but emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, and energetically, so you don't get any of that stuff on you. Right? So you don't get any of their distorted perception of reality on you. You can't control that, nor should you even want to. Allow them their process, whether their process is something they're in for days, for weeks, for months, for years, for decades, for a lifetime that is between them and their God. It is none of your business. And I know, again, you know, I'll probably get some backlash for that one because that's a tough one. You know, it's deeply personal when we care about people and we're in, you know, close relationship with them and we've opened up our heart and really invested. It can feel deeply personal, but I promise you, another's triggers another's tendency to um emotionally manipulate to um deceive to exploit to you know all the all the things that you know someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism tends to bring to the table as personal as it feels if we're you know ourselves carrying a lot of unresolved wounds and trauma the truth is their stuff is not personal to you your stuff is personal to you their stuff is not personal to you. So not personalizing it, you know, recognizing that, you know, whatever's going on with them is going on with them. And if the projections are coming at us as full blown adults, look, when we were kids, we didn't have a choice, but we're not kids anymore. As full blown adults, we can step out of the way and let that shit 
land over there somewhere. We actually don't have to take any of it on. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. My friends, I hope you got some value out of this today. If you liked what you heard, be sure to drop a like and a comment. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. And if you found this video helpful, you want to watch How to Spot Covert Narcissist Personality Disorder here. It's a good one. And another one you'll probably find very helpful, in particular when it comes to managing anyone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, covert or overt, uh, would be powerful phrases to disarm a narcissist. So be sure to check out those videos as well. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, I do have some spots available in the calendar this week here. Tammy M Coaching. For those who are interested in learning more about the possibility of working with me in my eight-week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class. So if that's of interest to you, specific to healing and recovery from codependency and narcissistic abuse recovery, there is a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. And as always, I will leave you with this. Know your value. Know your value and unlock your freedom. Much love. Bye for now.